anatomic classification which is not very commonly used the most common classification used is a proximal or a distal fistula so the proximal portion of the vessel is the origin of the fistulous tract or a distal portion of the vessel so it is very important because it gives a therapeutic advantage so the site of closure can be decided based on the origin of the fistulous tract this is another uncommonly used anatomic classification which is also useful for us to understand the anatomy of the cores of the fistulous tract here it is a coronary cameral fistula the right coronary artery is giving rise to the fistulous tract this is the normal rca while this is an abnormal single tract of a vascular that is dilated vascular channel which is draining into the right ventricle so right ventricle is the commonest site of termination for many of the coronary cameral fistulas up to 40% while here this is the normal rca this also is bit dilated while the fistulous tract is ending in the right atrium so which is constituting 20% it can be either rca or lca draining into ra is 20% here there is a fistula a single tract of fistula from the left coronary artery going to the pulmonary artery pulmonary trunk so this constitutes about 20% pulmonary trunk termination while here there are multiple trunks from the left coronary artery multiple tracks to the pulmonary trunk so it can be single or multiple direct vascular or sinusoidal tracks here this blue one is the coronary sinus so this is a fistulous tract which is tortuous dilated sometimes it can become aneurysmal also because of the volume it carries to the coronary sinus or here there is a tract to the other cardiac veins this is a very abnormal presentation coronary fistula this from the left coronary origin towards the bronchial vein this is also a coronary arteriovenous fistula so the other initial periods this classification which was used which is now being reclassified as only two schema that is proximal and distal shaka ki bara classification of coronary arterial fistula so this is a normal artery the arterial origin branching pattern the normal caliber of the coronary artery while the first type this is a normal coronary artery which is dilated this is the origin of the fistulous tract as you can divide this vessels into proximal to the fistula and distal to the fistula the proximal fistula portion is dilated tortuous and abnormal while distal to the fistula even in the same feeding vessel they are all small they might even be diseased or atherosclerotic and uh, this is because here they are affected by shunt there is more volume of blood they handle while the distal vessel get only lesser blood resulting in myocardial ischemia due to coronary steel phenomena so which is one of the important presentation in children and infants with a large coronary artery fistula presenting with ischemia or lv dysfunction similar to any other coronary artery anomalies which should be differentiated from idiopathic or genetic dilated cardiomyopathy so here it is second schema which is no longer used for uh, classification the mid portion of the feeding vessel while the third schema is the distal portion of the feeding vessel so these are the potential targets for closure also either by ligation or by device closure so proximal to the fistula the morphology is different they are dilated tortuous aneurysmal vessels handling large volume while distal to the fistula they are stolen away the blood is stolen away from the distal vessel so they are thin calcified diseased or atherosclerotic and there is evidence of myocardial 